Well, let's consider another way of adding, and this relies on something that's called adds to 10. And this comes as follows. Uh, basic arithmetic facts can be derived, can be classified into two sets. Uh, we have the things that we have to memorize, and we have the facts that we derive. Derived facts are usually retained better and used much more easily than memorized facts. One of the nice things about mathematics is you can derive almost everything. There's very little you have to memorize, and arguably, there's very little you should memorize. The focus of mathematics should not be on memorized facts. It should always be on derived facts. How do I get there from here? So if I take a look at addition facts, I can classify them into three groups. Uh, there are what are called the under 10 facts. These are numbers where I add and I get a number less than 10. The 10 facts, uh, where I add two numbers and I get 10. And the over 10 facts, where I add two numbers and I get a number larger than 10. And for decades, math education in the United States has been focused on memorizing all of these addition facts. So you drill a plus b, 5 plus 7, 4 plus 2, 5 plus 9, and so on and so forth, and you memorize all of these sums. Well, if we look at how other countries do it, notably those countries whose children routinely outperform U.S. children on international mathematics text, tests, um, the most common way of approaching addition is to use these first two strategies to derive this third strategy. We do not, in other countries, see memorization of 9 plus 8 equals 17. Uh, what we actually see is an approach to addition that uses the under 10 facts and the 10 facts to figure out what 9 plus 8 is. And this is a strategy that's known as adds to 10. So let's take a look at that. Find 9 plus 7 using adds to 10. Well, why not just remember 9 plus 10 equals 16? Well, first of all, you have to memorize it. But secondly, uh, the memorization doesn't introduce a key concept, which is understanding the connection between what you're doing and how you're getting there. So here we're looking for add ends that add to 10. And so what we might do here is we might say, well, I have 9. I'm adding 7. And the question that I want to think about is 9 plus what gives you 10? And I find that 9 plus 1 gives you 10. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my 7 into 1 and whatever's left over. It turns out to be 6. So 9 plus 7, well, 7 is a 1 and a 6. And the thing that I can rely on is I know 9 plus 1 is 10 and 6. And 10 plus 6, well, that's going to be 16. And so there's my classic adds to 10 approach. Well, again, you might ask the question, well, why don't I just memorize 9 plus 7 equals 16? Well, the reason is that the adds to 10 and the under 10 facts, uh, we can do multi-term additions through what's called composition and decomposition. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to break numbers apart and put them together in ways that they will either add to 10 or I'll have some leftover numbers that I can then add pretty easily. For example, let's consider a sum like this, 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 5, and try to add this in your head mentally. And if you're like most people, you're going to add 8 plus 3, 9, 10, that's 11, plus 6, plus 9, and you're going to add it left to right, and you're going to figure out what the value is. But here's a slightly different way of approaching it. The first add end is 8, so I might ask, well, what's going to add to 10 with 8? And, well, 8 plus 2 is 10. So where can I get a 2 from? Well, I can get a 2 from this 3. I can split this 3 into a 2 and a 1. So there's my 10. And the other thing I might notice here is this 1 combines with this 9 to make another 10. So I've taken care of the 1. And then I have these last two terms. The next add-in is 6, which I need a 4 to make 10. I'm already using this 9 here, so I'm going to split the 5 into a 4 and a 1. And so what do I have? I can make 10s with what I have. 8 and 2, there's a 10. 9 and 1, there's another 10. 6 and 4, there's another 10. And then there's this 1 left over, 
which gives me my total, 31. Now, the natural question that often emerges is, do I have to write all of that? And there's a quick answer. Well, yes, if you're asked to show all of your work. But in practice, when you're actually adding, the process goes something like this. And we might do this. If I were to add this, I might do something like this. 8 plus 3, I know that's 11, plus 9 is 20. 6 and 5 is 11. So I have 20 plus 11 is going to be 31. And if you take apart what I just described, what you see is I went through this process, 8 and 3, that's 10 and 11, 20, 6 and 5, 10 and 1, and that gives me my answer, 31. This decomposition adding to 10 and composition of numbers really is a valuable way of doing complex mental arithmetic. And to see an example of why that works, well, let's consider a more complicated problem. And the real value shows up when we look at multi-digit sums. So again, let's consider the sum 38 plus 73 plus 46. And again, try to do this in your head using whatever method that you want. And you'll probably find it's kind of difficult to do that. But if I break these numbers apart into what they are, well, 38 is 30 and 8. 73 is 70 and 3, 46 is 40 and 6, and what I can do is I can add the tens fairly easily. That's 140. And then I can add the other things together. That's 10, 11, 17. And then I can add the numbers together, 140 plus 17, 157. And again, mentally, what this goes, how this works, is something like this. 38, 73, 46. 30 plus 70 plus 40 is 140. 8 plus 3 plus 6 is 17. That gets me 140 plus 17, 157. And with very little effort, it becomes easy to add multi-digit sums here mentally without ever having to write anything down.